July 21st, there's going to be a special meeting about yes. the referendum. Yep. July 21st, is that a Sunday morning? Or Sunday? That's a Monday afternoon at 5.30. Monday afternoon here right. at 5.30? Yep. Who will be involved in that meeting? City Council. Oh, it's a City Council meeting? The City Council workshop meeting. City? It's an official oh. City Council workshop meeting. It's not a special. Yep. Can you give us a preview? Yeah, it's, we're going to work through all the issues uh, related to Congress Square and the referendum. So, so the referendum raised a number of issues about the role of the land bank, the role of the Parks Commission, um, the, uh, whether or not the City Council wants to uh, put the issue back out to vote again in November. Um, if not, uh, does the Congress Square Redesign Committee, what authority do they have going forward? Um, and and uh, what type of benchmarks uh, do we want to uh, pursue in terms of the redevelopment of Congress Square. Why are I mean, there are, there, we also need to reconcile what the City Council passed at the end of April with what's in the petition. Why are you waiting until July 21st? Well, uh, because we just had a very long council meeting last night. <laughs> no kidding. The uh, initiative does not go into effect until 30 days after the vote, so it wouldn't be until uh, uh, mid-July. And, and um, I wanted to give our corporate counsel and staff the opportunity uh, to review and do all the appropriate uh, background work, and I wanted to give people plenty of notice. And I thought trying to do something on July 7th would be uh, too soon. I, I wanted to introduce uh, Mike Murray is here, who is the Neighborhood Services Coordinator. Councilor Ed Suspect is here uh, as well. And you're Jim Prosser. Jim Prosser. And I'm Cheryl Joseph. Okay. Did you want to ask any questions or? I wanted to thank you for the care of the trees with mulch repairing the sidewalk with uh, new bricks, mm -hmm. the flowers around Longfellow Square, and the Memorial Day Parade. Great. Well, thank you. And uh, in particular, thank you for the, uh, uh, about the, uh, the trees. We, we just planted uh, over 25 apple trees. Um, and I participated, we, we planted 12 apple trees up at the east end right across from the east end school and we have an apple orchard there now uh, with the 12 trees and there were an additional i think 20 trees uh, along with that so we had uh, 25 or 30 apple trees that we planted and then just because i got the time to kind of explain this too but um we uh Two years ago, we got a donation, or a year ago, of a, four chestnut trees. And, and chestnut trees, as you know, have died uh, all across the country from a disease that has attacked uh, chestnut trees. And these four chestnut trees uh, were developed at, with $36 million investment uh, to come up with a chestnut tree that would survive the disease that had killed them across the country. And we just planted four of those in Portland uh, a year and a half ago, and we just got a donation of three more that we will be planting. So not only will we have apple trees, peach trees, but we'll also have more chestnut trees. Are they gonna go on the east end too? Are they gonna be what? On the east end? No, they'll be throughout the city. Yeah. And I'm glad, um, we were able to do a little bit more work on sidewalks, and this past Memorial Day parade was one of the better Memorial Day parades we ever had. <laughs> so, and I'm I'm not sure who can claim responsibility, but it was one of the bigger and and better ones that we had. So, Jim, did you have any questions? Uh, well, you reviewed everything about Tanger Square. That's what I wanted to hear about. But I do have a question, and that is, um, again, motorcycles. And I don't see any effort, again, this year by the police department to enforce a law that um, doesn't allow you to modify your exhaust to make it louder. And 
talked, written to the chief of police a couple of times, um, and he did polite responses. I brought it up here with you last year, polite response. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we just are okay with loud motorcycles and then it's something that a few of us just need to get over. Uh, could I yep. respond to that? Um, <coughs> Jim, Ed Sussman, I chair of the Public Safety Health and Human Services Committee meeting. I too um, personally find the noise from motorcycles really antisocial and, and a problem. Um, what I'd like to do, partly under, you, you jog my memory on it, there's also the issue of graffiti that is, I find now, back with a vengeance around yeah. occupants as well. Every one of the silver control boxes, traffic signals. Um, what I'd like to do um, would be to place these issues on the July Public Safety Committee meeting, which would be the second Tuesday in July, um, and uh, ask the police chief as well as the, the community prosecutor to come um, and both update us in terms of um, what, uh, what they're currently doing, um, what the results of, of previous enforcement efforts have been, um, and then uh, take public comment because I, I agree with you. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a real problem. All it takes is one idiot on a motorcycle with a illegally uh, altered muffler to wake up hundreds of people on their way up or down Brighton Avenue, Congress Street, you name it. So I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up and I will put that on the Tuesday. I appreciate that. So two, it should be Tuesday, July 8th at 6, I'm sorry, 5.30 p.m. Thank you. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you, Councilor Sussman, for being so responsive. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if, if I don't, I'll probably hear about it from the mayor. So yeah, that's, well, you know, no, no I, seriously, I'm glad you brought that up. Because no. so, uh, motorcycles and graffiti are two issues that seem to be getting worse now. I, <coughs> I would note that uh, we have made some progress uh, through the work of Mr. Murray and others uh, with uh, Freshman Alley. And, uh, the graffiti that had been there has been removed, and the uh, uh, dumpster that has been there has been removed, and no, there's no longer uh, any parking there. So that uh, alley through there has been uh, greatly improved. What alley? Sorry. Freshman alley, right Sorry. by Portland High School. Oh. The connection between that and Congress Street. But that, uh, at some time, it, the graffiti there was pretty, uh, intense. So, <clears throat> you got a question? Has, has the city decided to take any further action regarding the cutoff of aid to immigrants from the state? Uh, are you going to challenge that in any way in court, or is uh, there any decision made on that? <clears throat> well, uh, Jessica, make sure I get this right. Um, but I, I think we just issued a news release. Oh. And, and um, the city manager, <coughs> um, we, we were officially notified yesterday by uh, uh, the state, by the Department of Health and Human Services, that uh, reimbursement in general assistance in the areas that they've identified uh, would cease to continue as of uh, yesterday. And the city manager is announcing today that we will continue uh, to make payments uh, the city will, and obviously we'll be working with uh, various groups to pursue, pursue uh, either legal recourse or uh, legislative recourse to reverse that uh, decision. But at least for the immediate future, um, we will continue to make payments in the city of Portland. <coughs> and uh, uh, we're hopeful that the Attorney General uh, fairly soon will rule on this issue and that her ruling will be similar to the one that she made last month uh, where she decided that the previous rules that had been introduced by the administration were both an unfunded mandate and unconstitutional. So, and we, um, in Portland, we think it will affect uh, several hundred people and um, the cost to us would be uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. For 
Oh, well, to continue to... Without the state's right. assistance? Right. Affects their home. Another lawsuit? Well, uh, if the Attorney General announces uh, okay. that uh, uh, rules against that policy, then obviously we don't have to go to court. But it'll probably take somebody outside um, who is affected by the decision that um, would then go to court. Um, you know, there'll be various communities around the state that would be affected, and each one, we don't know the full extent of which communities may step up and say they're going to continue to make payments and those that may not. Do you know which communities these are? Yeah. Can you name them? Or is this all in the press release? Well, um, Portland is obviously the largest community affected. Uh, Lewiston is probably the next largest. Uh, both Westbrook and Augusta uh, would also have citizens that would be affected. Uh, from what I've been told, Bangor uh, may not be uh, as affected as the other communities I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say that Portland would have the largest number of people affected. Uh, and then you have Westbrook, uh, Lewiston, uh, Augusta, and Backward. Have you talked to the mayors of these? I have not. Um, <clears throat> I, it was just simple, it was a decision that was made earlier today uh, in consultation with the city manager, and I haven't had a chance to uh, determine. I, I, I know the mayor of Lewiston, for example, supports uh, the uh, proposal. <laughs> What about the uh, lawsuit on, um, oh, there's so many I can't keep track of, on uh, the buffer zone? Are you going to pursue that? That, you know, we, we've been sued uh, on that issue. Uh, there is a case before the U.S. Supreme Court, and we believe that uh, the, the court will rule by uh, almost eminently on, on that issue. And it will certainly affect uh, the outcome of the suit that we're facing at this point. Do you need to uh, hire extra legal assistance? Um, in the most recently passed budget, there was additional money that was placed in the budget uh, for uh, support in the corporate counsel's office. For a part time person, wasn't it? Um, you remember this. It, w it was to uh, fill another part-time position and then uh, to also um, fill so a position between the police department and the city. But there was also money that was available for both the police department and the corporate counsel office to sit down and determine how to best uh, uh, provide legal uh, counsel. What about as long as it's a little bit of a confusing answer, but it was kind of it was more uh, an allocation of additional money without it being set exactly how many people would be hired as a result of that. How much money? Could well, Carol, because the issue was no, because the issue is we wanted them to decide whether or not they wanted to hire a position or put the money aside to retain outside counsel, and which would be more uh, efficient. What about the situation between the House of Turkey and Joe Sully yep. and the city? Uh, that has been resolved. It has been? It has been. I was actually and, and they have been, uh, they have been I, I understand, well, well Jessica, you, but they, they, have they, they, they have agreed, the uh, House of Turkey, that there will be a uh, sprinkler uh, 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 they have an approved plan in place with the fire department right. to replace this. The House of Jerky has an improved, is that what you call it? They have received their permit and they have an approved plan in place with the fire department to address the sprinkler issues. Improved plan in place yep. to address the fire sprinkler. <coughs> They've gotten their, excuse my back, but he might say something. No. The, they've gotten their business license then? They have been issued their license, yep. Business license. Mm -hmm. Okay. Been issued. Okay. So is Joe Soley not involved in this at all? 
Um, my understanding is the agreement is with the House of Turkey and with the, that part of the building and there. the establishment that they're in. Okay, so Joe Sullivan is involved in it. Um, I, I don't know that. And, um, um, are they being, are they, are they being inspected by the Department of Agriculture, which they were supposed to have been inspected by? The House of Turkey? Yeah. I, I don't know the answer to that. You know? Oh, it, well, according to the clerk's office, in order to get the city's clerk's office, they told me that they have to get inspected by the Department of Agriculture in Augusta in order to get their business license. Well, then if they got their business license, it must have been checked out. I, I don't know the answer to that, um, Carol. That was one of the conditions, and there were several others yep. that they hadn't met, like uh, March Buckle. Well, I, I, I think, and I might be overstating this, but I think the major issue for us was the uh, the health and safety in the sprinkler uh, issue. Right. But, well, the Department of Agriculture. Okay. Well, we wouldn't have issued the business license if they hadn't had all those boxes checked off, so. Do you think, or well, the clerk's office? You have to check tomorrow, yeah. I'm sorry, what? You have to check with them tomorrow to oh. see the back of the And, table. and so are, they're not, they've been open all of this time since May, before Memorial Day. Are they going to be penalized financially for being open all of this time? No, not, not that I know of. The issue of whoever is in charge of the agenda for the city council meetings get resolved. For, for the what? The who's in charge of the agenda for the council meetings ever been resolved? In terms who's, of who's the, who controls the agenda for council you meetings? You are the. It was, it was in the news for a few months. Well, the the um, uh, the city council in December passed a resolution. Um, outlining a process whereby uh, counselors bring something uh, to be put on the agenda and uh, the um, uh, there, there is an interpretation of the charter uh, that indicates that the mayor uh, sets the agenda and what we're trying to do is just work uh, with both of those uh, 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 approaches and uh, uh, since December, we have things we haven't had any conflict uh, uh, between the two. Hold it, please. And what we what we have been trying to do is uh, <clears throat> be focused on uh, priorities and work plan that uh, the committees do have, and try to make sure that when items do come to the council, that they've been vetted. Uh, through the committee process first. Um, so for example, last night when we had the discussion about the, fee, the bags and the plastic bags and the fees, that had spent a considerable time in the Transportation Sustainability and Energy Committee being discussed and vetted and worked on so that uh, by the time it came to the council, it was somewhat clear um, as to how we might go on that. So Ed. I was just gonna add that um, I think that um, the council as a whole, I think organizationally, is working better than I've ever seen it. Um, in, in my time, we've got a perfect, perfect cue for the manager to come in because uh, uh, we've got uh, the council as a whole has been working with the manager and staff on long-term goals and objectives, um, trying to dovetail then staff assignments for accomplishing that and timelines trying to dovetail each of the council committee's work plan with what their goals and objectives are and making sure that if the council said, you know, X was a priority, well, does the appropriate committee have that on their agenda to work on it? So I, I would just say that overall, I think um, this is relatively new to all of us. We've, I don't ever recall having done this before in previous times on the council. So, you know, there's some growing pains as we try to figure our way through it, but I think we're, 
we're on the path to becoming more and more, I don't want to use the word efficient, because efficient and, and, and democracy don't always go well together, but I, I, I think the communication is getting better, and I think that the committees, the council as a whole, and the staff, I would, I would submit are working better and better together. I mean, is it perfect yet? No, but um, we're, we're, I think, light years ahead of where we used to be, and I think people are pretty excited about what we see in front of us, so for what it's worth, my, my opinion. Regarding the styrofoam ban, is the city aware of any alternatives that are out there, things that are made from potatoes or other, other things that might be uh, possible to use, and are they sort of encouraging businesses to go find them, or are they providing any information to help businesses find alternatives to the styrofoam? Well, uh, uh, Councilor Suspic Suspic is the expert on the uh, city council on styrofoam plastic bag and fees, but uh, clearly there are alternative products uh, that are available to styrofoam, and uh, there uh, clearly will be some period of adjustment uh, for businesses uh, when they make the conversion to styrofoam, but uh, th there definitely are uh, other products that are, are, are available. But and just to expand on that, the um, uh, Lots of other communities obviously have already done this, so there's clearly a market. There's, there's companies, I suspect local businesses are going to start to get communications from vendors of uh, uh, non-polystyrene foam containers. Uh, when the school department, which is where a lot of this got started two years ago, when the school department uh, uh, no longer switched from using polystyrene foam containers and trays, um, what we did, because uh, I was involved with that, we worked with uh, Hudamaki, which is an international company, but they bought the old Chinette factory up in Waterville, Maine. And uh, what they do is they make products, uh, trays, cups, pl plates, etc., from 100% post-consumer recycled paper products. So they're, they're made from recycled products. And then the, the products themselves, the trays and plates and stuff, are not only recyclable, they are also compostable. Um, and instead of shipping polystyrene foam from the other China, where the Great Wall is, uh, we're now shipping stuff down from uh, one of the, the warehouses, I think is actually in China, Maine. So we're buying local, we're sourcing local, reducing the carbon footprint, Maine job. So it, it, uh, it was, it, that was a very positive outcome, I think, of, of discovering there's some sources right here within the state of Maine. And Hudamaki, by the way, was great to, they, they donated products for a uh, period of time so we could test them and everything and stuff and try them out and they were great to work with. What do you think about the activities down at Congressford Park? Do you think they're good for the community or not? Well, I, I, I don't, there, I, I would never say when you have activity anywhere, it's hard to say, unless it's, um, you know, criminal activity. <laughs> but for the most part, uh, you know, any activity that you have is, is positive for parks and, and for things. Unless it's criminal. Whether or not uh, the activity will be sustained over time, you know, we don't we don't know at this point. And uh, there was a second uh, food truck award uh, for Congress Square and Urban Sugar. Right. They make bite sized donuts. Bite sized what? Donuts. Donuts. Oh, good. Fancy. Fancy swancy. And again, um, what you know, what we're uh, thinking about at the workshop meeting that we have on 21st, uh, we'll have the opportunity to start thinking about uh, uh, an array of policy uh, decisions that the city council will make in regards to Congress Square. Okay, like somebody said something about a public private. Partnership for down there? Well, somebody, the, the Friends of uh, Congress Square put out a um, uh, news release saying they wanted to have a public private partnership. I don't know what that means. Um, I, I don't know who the public is or who the private um, that that partnership will occur with. But we'd like to talk to the Friends of Congress Square to find out more of their ideas. I'm sorry, what? We, we would like to talk to the Friends of Congress oh, Square. Friends. Uh, to get a little bit better ideas about what they think that private, public private partnership might look like. I haven't had any recent conversation with the city manager or the council or anybody about the uh, lighting deal for it or, or request for it. Right. But is there somebody who 
is already doing is doing work or there's there are men ready to do the job um, easy electric or something of that nature uh, you can google it um, everything electric that's it everything electric just met the gentleman two of them met the owner and but but speaking with mr soledad the old for you yeah. briefly but, but they don't have any funding to to do it uh what, what do you mean well i mean are you are they're, you they're willing to meet you halfway the city pays half and uh, they pay half oh okay does that make sense I, I it's just nobody's approached us to talk to us about that I'm sorry? Nobody has approached us to talk to us about Until that. me. Huh? Until now. Until now, right. So, here it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, I don't waste time. And no other, no other deal. But, but what do you think about it? Possibility? Yes, no. Uh, it's crazy? Yes. Well, the, you know, we just got through uh, with our budget, passing our budget budgeting process. We're now in the process of uh, reviewing our CIP, our capital improvement uh, okay. uh, program. And that's where we typically put money in to do capital uh, uh, projects and programs. This isn't uh, in there because nobody came to us to- Well, no, it just, it just it, I'm breaching the subject, I'm just bringing it forward, you know, on behalf of them. I think the best thing for you to do now is if you send me an email uh, okay. about what you're thinking about um, what you might want to do, we'll pass along to Mike Kubinski, who is the head of our public works department, Need a pencil? and and he can find a time to meet with you, uh, talk about what you are proposing and okay. what the city's doing and what's possible.